And here is our finale. Scott here again with another Hyperbowl. I know it's hyperbole, but Hyperbowl still makes it mine. This is the Transporter Refueled. They've rebooted the Transporter franchise. Now, going into this, it looked like a low rent version of Transporter. It looked like it was half-assed in how it was made, its ideas, its concepts. Doesn't hurt that they're wearing those blonde wigs and the trailers show them and don't really emphasize the fact that they're supposed to look bad like specifically standing out to be what they are. It just looks like that's what they are. It makes it look cheap. There's a problem with that. Um, the guys, not Jason Statham, but looks like him and is acting like him and talking like him and really, that's my main problem with this whole thing. Because not only Transporter went to TV series, but then back. So it's, that's, that's a first I think. Because we've had movies that were movies that went to video and then back. Um, I don't remember what exactly it was, but pretty much once you go to video, you're done. And then when you go to TV, you're even more done. Transport is the first to actually make it back, I think. Outside of, I guess, Star Trek, honestly. It kind of did that, but that was concurrent. This, though, has a low-rent Jason Statham. And picture this. If they were to make Rambo movies, and the third one came out in 1989, 90? My years may be off. They made the fourth one in 2008. Imagine if they rebooted Rambo in 1995. Imagine that. And they had someone else. It wouldn't work. You know why? Because Rambo is synonymous with Stallone. That's what this is. The transporter, Frank Martin, is synonymous with Jason Statham. Because really, it's just him doing stuff, awesomely, for three movies. But what you get with that, though, is that it's very much Jason Statham is required to make these movies work, and these movies work because of Jason Statham. The character is his. Well, Frank Martin is this dude. It's literally him. And this new guy is really just trying to be Jason Statham. Because he's trying to be the character, but there's not much of a character. It's really just Jason Statham with some stuff. So... That's our first flaw. And that, going in, I'm like, uh, is this going to work? Go see this movie. Holy crap. It's good. It's not just lowered expectations were exceeded good. It's legitimately good. It would be unequivocally, unequivocally, whatever word you want to use for that, a full-fledged, legit Transporter 4 if Statham was in it. It's that caliber. It's better than 3. I have, I have problems with 3, but it's up there with 1 and 2. 1 is still amazing for how just tight that movie is, and 2 just goes, ah, with the fun, and is just that much more. 3 is made by someone who thinks they know how to make one, but doesn't. They hit the beats, but not hard enough and in the right ways. That happens a lot with franchises lately. Even Furious 7 suffered for, compared to 5 and 6. But this, this is by someone who knew the beats, and saw how they were missed in 3, and fixed it here in Refuel. Now, it's not 4, it's a reboot, but it takes place, like, in 2000, so maybe it's actually an Origins, like Transporter Zero, maybe? I don't know. But what I really like about this movie is it felt like a Transporter movie. It was wide open in a bright Europe. And that's the, the movies, that's Transporter. Like, that's the way they've been shot make you feel that. I know two is in the U.S., but you know what I mean. It's got the visuals. It's got the, the style of move, the movement, the way things are. The fighting, and the, even the scenes. Like, there's a bit when he's fighting some dudes, and he grabs a hose off of a canister and starts whipping it and fighting guys. It's no fire hose, but you get it, you know? And there's a bit when he tries to escape, and they're in this hall corridor that's, like, this wide... And there's drawers, like, it's a file cabinet kind of thing. Like, a, a hallway of it. And he runs in, there's three guys behind him and one new guy in front of him. And he's like... <sighs> and he fights him in there. And he's pulling it out and slamming it on them. And it's just, it's like the bus scene. And then he fights guys on a ship. Because this is where they end up. And it's this jerk, bad guy, collector dude. And he's got weapons on the wall. And one guy grabs an axe. It's like the fire axe in one. They're not ripping the scenes off, but it's like, ah, in, 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 like two did with one with the oil. It's transport. It feels like transporter. 
It's like what Die Hard 4 did with the elevator shaft and stuff like that, if you go watch the old review for that. It didn't do what 3 did, like Die Hard 5 did, where it's like, I think I know how to make this, and fail. So Transporter Refueled absolutely is a GPC-worthy one, I think. Um, they all are, honestly. But Refueled? The worst part about it is the guy is an uncharismatic Jason Statham clone. I like Jai Courtney better, and Sam Worthington better, because at least they're likable. This dude's kind of weird in how he's doing this for his Jason Statham impersonation. And he's just all kind of always like this. And it's... And I don't know if Game of Thrones, if he's really like that, but that's how he came off. Because that's what Frank Martin is. So if you're going to do this, that's how it's going to be. It just it feels weird. It really feels, feels weird. And... I still have had my paw from it. At the same time, the action scenes are fantastic. I, they're not quite on par with like the chase scenes for Mission Impossible. Or the, some of the stuff actually in Man From U.N.C.L.E. was great. And yet, absolutely we're seeing. Is there crazy stuff? Yeah, in Transporter 2 he flipped and caught a ball on a hook. In this one he does a drift and actually hits four, three or four fire hydrant nozzles to make a thing that catch bikers as they drive through. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, absolutely see it. Like, I can't stress enough how good that movie was. It might be diminishing returns of expectations being exceeded, but who cares? I had a blast watching it. I can't recommend it highly enough for that. You just want to see a cool guy doing some cool stuff? All right. It's great, like, and yet he's not cool. He's the weakest part of it. His dad's awesome. His dad's great. The girls are all right. Bad guy's kind of meh, but they kind of always are in transporter movies. They're never that great. It's not about them. It's more about him doing his stuff. And the guy pulls it off, but he shouldn't be trying to impersonate Statham that much. That's my problem with it. And really, Statham would have made this a legitimate, full-fledged transporter for bar none. Like, he would have he would have had that charisma to make the dialogue work, to make the interactions believable, to make the scenes more fun. Because there's bits when he's, like, smirking and doing different lines and stuff, but not quite at the same level as Statham, because he had the confidence. This guy doesn't quite have it. This guy came off cocky, not confident. And I guess that's really the problem I have with it. But it still worked, because he's kind of supposed to be cocky and confident. But it's just a little more of one than the other. A bit too much for my liking, for what's supposed to be that character, when he's trying to impersonate it. But that's that one. And that's nearly completing the summer of, uh, of catch-up, because I still have to see Pixels, if I do, and American Ultra. They're both still playing, so I fully plan to see those. Once I do those, I'll do the summer summary. And then we'll go from there and actually get GPC back on its feet. It's coming. So, thanks for watching these. Check them all out. They're Honestly, all three are absolutely worth seeing. Um, I would recommend Man From U.N.C.L.E. over the others. Just because it's been out for three weeks now. Um, then Transporter and Hitman. Uh, they're all worth seeing, absolutely. They're all big, fun action movies. Hit U.N.C.L.E. doesn't have anybody balding, but the other, guys, the other ones do. So, there you go. Check them all out. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.